Greetings everyone. The World Economic Forum's recent global risk report highlighted climate change and human-led environmental damage as key risks that need to be addressed on an urgent basis. The report warns that there is no vaccine against climate change and no one is immune to it. A further challenge is that the impacts of climate change disproportionately affect developing and underdeveloped countries, thereby worsening existing inequality and social fissures. The outcome of COP26 is a compromise. It reflects the interests, the contradictions, the state of political will in the world today. It's an important step, but not enough. These were the words of the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres at the conclusion of the conference. There were member countries that focused on limiting global warming. There were developing countries seeking to secure firm pledges on climate finance. And there were vulnerable countries seeking compensation for those suffering from the impacts of climate change. Now, reaching agreement in these and other large forums would necessitate holistic analysis, stress testing assumptions, and comparing trade-offs. However, the good news is about 90% of the countries are making net zero commitments. India announced a target of reaching net zero emissions by 2070, China was 2060, and Russia said carbon neutral by 2060. The investment community also understands immense opportunities in this transition. Over $130 trillion of money under asset management has now made a commitment to be net zero. Now, ecology and economy are often seen as distinct separate areas, often with conflicting objectives. But unless they are seen as a symbiotic partnership, neither will achieve sustainable and flourishing growth. Now, this becomes even more critical given the increasing interlinkages between countries globally on trade, natural resources, health and overall development. We need to look no further than the past couple of years when COVID spread across countries with repercussions cascading just beyond health. The world is interdependent and that goes both for its economy and its ecology. We often tend to look at natural resources as being subordinate to economic gains, but natural resources are a part of the real wealth of nations. They are the natural capital from which other forms of capital are created. They can play a central role in livelihoods and poverty reductions since many communities depend on natural resources for their livelihood. Natural capital is essential for economic growth, employment, and ultimately prosperity. An encouraging trend is the increasing number of people, both as consumers and citizens, who are now demanding better solutions from companies and governments. In the food and beverage sector, for example, embedding sustainability into business strategy is now critical. Consumers are being increasingly aware and interested in how the products they consume are being sourced and whether the business is acting responsibly. This creates a definite incentive for businesses to put in place sustainability measures through the value chain, ranging from sourcing to recycling, waste management and packaging. This has also led to multi-stakeholder partnerships to help accelerate and develop sustainable practices. One example is Trusty, a sustainability code and verification tea system for tea in India and the India Plastics Pact, which is setting time-bound targets to transform from a linear system into a circular economy. While the focus on strengthening initiatives related to ecology has increased, it definitely needs to get accelerated. There are some encouraging signs in this direction. For example, the move to look at nature-based solutions, taking actions to protect, manage and restore ecosystems such as forest, coasts, etc. This will have the benefit of addressing challenges such as climate change, food and water security, and livelihoods while providing biodiversity benefits. There is also a trend towards natural capital accounting. This helps address the foundational gap in accurately valuing our natural resources. It could definitely provide a better perspective on the link between economy and ecology, which can help to better making policy decisions for natural resources and economic development. There is an urgent need to rethink our relationship with ecology, with the natural resources of the planet that we live on. Seeing this as a symbiotic relationship, which goes hand in hand with economic progress and improved well-being for humans now and in the future, 
This perspective needs to get embedded and translated into action by businesses, governments, and civil society at large. I wish you a very engaging, enriching, and useful time at this year's Eastern Himalayan Naturonomics Forum. I hope it will spark new ideas, foster new perspectives, partnerships, and actions to provide and enhance our natural environment. Thank you.